In the beginning, there was the noise. And the noise was without form. And so it wasn't very useful. But then, humans said, let there be signal. And there was signal. And the signal quality was actually pretty good. From the cave paintings of Altamira to caves of steel and fiber optics, the information that humanity has collected together, the, the summation of it, the result of that vector is, of course, you. You are the inheritor. You are living in the greatest time in any of our awareness. You have available to you the greatest richness of any generation in history and that you have available to you at your fingertips more knowledge than anyone has ever had in the history of Earth. Good evening. This is MIT Technology Review, Innovators Under 35, as you already know. I am dead program. In the real world, people call me Ron Evans, but that's not very important right now. And I'm the ringleader of the hybrid group. We're a software consultancy that specializes in writing software for hardware companies. And we're based in Los Angeles, California, and here in Spain. We do a lot of work for clients such as Intel. And we are also the creators of three of the five most popular open source projects in robotics and the Internet of Things, Cylon.js and some others. But today I'm here to talk about the power of play. Perhaps the possibility of play might be a slightly less pretentious title, but let's just go with it. So about four years ago, I uh, started working with the founders of a company based out of Boulder, Colorado, a Techstars company called Sphero. And Sphero had created a small toy robot ball. And the thing that was really interesting was it was a toy with an API. It was a toy you could actually program. And my team, we took a look at this and we thought, this is incredibly exciting. Let's go to Colorado and talk to these guys. So we went there and we started working with them and did a series of, all, we've been doing all kinds of work for them for many years. We did uh, kids programming in alliance with Google. And we, but we would take the spheros around to all of these different events and people would pick them up and look at them and especially very business facing people. And they would look at it and they would say, what is this? And we'd say, it's a Sphero. And they'd say, what's it for? And we'd say, it's uh, a toy. And they're like, but why? Um, it's fun. <laughs> now, of course, what we couldn't tell them because we were under many, many layers of non-disclosure agreements was that some other people in the technology industry had actually taken quite a lot of notice of this little toy and had actually invited Sphero to be part of their incubator in Burbank, California, and in fact considered that Sphero was going to be the key integral technology behind what has been not just a cultural phenomenon, but also one of the most successful toys introduced in years, the uh, BB-8. I couldn't even show my kids the BB-8 that I had in my backpack for six months. The BB-8 in the movie, by the way, is a real robot with actual hardware built by Sphero. So, Despite the fact that this seemed very non-serious, it's actually a creation with a lot of fantastic, wonderful results, both in terms of the fun that it creates and also the generations of boys and, and most importantly, girls who think BB-8 is cute and they want to program it. So let's play a game together. Will, will you all play a game with me? Yes? All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you all to stand up. I'm, I'm, if you can't stand up, it's okay. The people around you will help you. And you're not going to be able to use your cell phones or other mobile devices, so you might wanna, you're going to need both hands. All right, so um, now it's playtime. So we're going to play a game that I learned from my friend Misha Gluberman, who's a performance artist from uh, Toronto, Canada, and it's a sound game. 
So the, we're going to learn the basic vocabulary, then we're going to play the, rule, play the game. So we're going to first start by making a sound, and it's going to be a vowel sound. So it could be an ah, it could be an o, oh, you can go ah, ah, but it has to be a vowel type sound. Okay, are we ready? One, two, three. Ah, oh, beautiful. <laughs> All right, the second musical symbol, the second item of our sonic vocabulary is a sibilant sound. So it's a, it could be a hissing sound, it could be a shushing sound. So it could be a s, or it could be a whoosh, or you know, you could make kind of a wobbling whoosh, whoosh, you, know, you know, play with it, have some fun with it. Okay, are you guys ready? One, two, three. That's great. All right, so the third sonic vocabulary element that we're going to utilize is a percussive sound. So it could be like a snapping, it could be a little golf claps, you know, you can kind of move around, anything, but, but you know, you don't really want to clap too loud because you don't want to hit the people next to you. You can save the clapping for the end if you, want, if you want. Okay, are you ready for the percussive sound? One, two, three. Okay, that's great. All right, now let's play the flag game. So, um, oh, thank you. So we're gonna, we have three flags here. We're going to start with just one. Well, I need to give this back to you. So um, if you want to give this to somebody in the middle there. So here's how the flag game works. So the flag game, if you are right around the person, literally right around the person holding the flag, and whoever has the flag, hold it up in the air. Hold it up in the air, please. Thank you. So whoever is right around the person, make the vowel sound, the ah sound and pass the flag around to various people. If he takes too long, just you know, reach up and take it from him, but pass it around between you, and only the people right next to the flag make the ah sound. Are you ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Hold it up. Don't stop. I didn't say stop. Okay, now you can stop. That was great. All right, now we're going to play the triple flag game. So we have two more flags here. So uh, we're going to put the blue flag over here, over on the, well, okay, over there. <laughs> and then we're going to put the red flag over here. So red team, you are going to make the um, clapping sound, the little clapping, okay? You will continue making the vowel sound, and then you over here make the hissing, the sibilant sound, the shh, and hold it up, and don't forget to pass it around. Hold it up high. Okay, are we ready to play? One, two, three. What happened? I don't hear it over here. What happened? Ooh, fancy. Okay, great. All right. Now we're going to play the advanced three flag game. The advanced three flag game is exactly the same as the three flag game, except without any flags. Okay, so you have to be listening and you have to be aware of the people right around you. Otherwise, it's the same rule. But let's start where the flags are. Where's, where, hold up your flag. Okay, so what's your sound? Perfect, okay, and who, where's the flags over here? And what's your sound? The red flag? Clapping, excellent. And then where is the, and what's your sound? Okay, excellent, now you can put your flags down. So same rules, but you have to pass it by listening. Okay, you ready? One, two, three.
Remember, the people right around. You don't have to pass it you, just by listening. And rest. Excellent. All right, now we're ready to play the game of life. So the game of life is a, a mathematical game that's often known as cellular automata, and it was invented by John Conway. So we're going to play the game of life, except all of you are going to be the biocomputers, and we're going to use a trinary system based on the sonic vocabulary that we've just learned. So here are the rules. If one or two people right next to you are making a sound, start making that sound after about a couple of seconds. Okay, if one or two people next to you are making a sound, start making the same sound. If everyone around you is making the same sound, stop making any sound at all. Okay, so if one or two people next to you are making a sound, make that same sound. If everyone around you is making a sound, stop making a sound at all. So let's seed uh, where, are the where are the sounds starting. Okay, you don't need the flags anymore, remember. So what, which sound are you? Ah, uh, uh, okay. And where's the other two starting points? Okay, you'll be ah. Uh, you, sir? Yes, you. Excellent. And then we need the clapping over here. Who will start with clapping? Perfect. Okay. So remember, one or two people next to you make the same sound. Everyone around you doing the same sound, be quiet. Let's play the game of life. Are we ready? One, two, three. And inevitably, um, it always dies in this game. <laughs> so was that fun? Did you guys have, did you enjoy that? Yeah. So um, John Conway, an English, uh, English mathematician, as I like to call him. You can sit down now. Um, John Conway, um, during his time at Cambridge, he spent all his time playing games. And uh, he was really nervous. He was really afraid he was going to get fired, get kicked off of the university campus, because all of his colleagues in the math department were very serious people who were doing serious work, and all he seemed to ever do was play games and invent games and play around with ideas. And uh, he was absolutely terrified, but he, he just couldn't stop. It was somewhat compulsive. But as a result of his play, we have had incredible advances in number theory. We've had the invention of the entire field of study of artificial life and cellular automata. We've had advances in games theory and statistics and economics. And this is all as a result of playing around. So James Carr said, a finite game is played for the purpose of winning. An infinite game is played for the purpose of continuing the play. So let's keep this in mind, because the, the great game, the infinite game, is the game of humanity. Let's all go out and play. Thank you.